Hey, my name is Thomas and look what I've got for you today, the Nikon FM2. So I already did a review of the Nikon FM, just uh, number two was missing. Same design, same body, everything looks the same. So let's find out if the small difference too, maybe is a big difference in reality. The history of the Nikon FM2 starts with the FM in 1978. It was Nikon's first try to make a somewhat more small, more compact camera, uh, influenced by the famous Olympus OM-1 from 1971. So 1978 saw the introduction of the Nikon FM and in 82 already came the FM2 and the big upgrade here is the shutter. Uh, fastest shutter time now, 1 over 4,000th of a second. It's the fastest all-mechanical shutter in any SLR camera, save the Contax S2, which came in 1992. And the flash sync is also super fast at 1 over 250th of a second. Like today's digital cameras, the SLR cameras can't do it any faster. So, apart from the shutter, about nothing else changed, but the shutter was really great news. Operation is pretty straightforward. You've got your shutter speed dial. Um, you do this to unlock the shutter, otherwise it's locked, and also to activate your meter. Um, aperture, of course, is here. And um, this is a nice feature, but also very annoying, because if you're shooting with your left eye, you always have this thing right in your eye. This small tap is to do double exposures. Um, if you activate it, it will automatically flip back to the normal position after you took your double exposure, so you can't forget about it. Uh, you lift here to select your ISO of the film. Um, here's your film rewind, uh, and this lock here is to, to prevent you to accidentally open the back. Uh, flash sync, of course it's got a hot shoe. Um, this is your aperture preview lever self timer here you've got uh, a winder connection tripod socket and here goes your battery it takes the standard sr44 batteries uh, easily available everywhere uh, and this is the trademark nikon circular uh, eyepiece and it takes all the attachments the same attachments they still uh, say uh, sell today uh, one thing you notice also when comparing this to the old FM is they actually are using more plastic parts. So this piece is plastic, this seems to be plastic, at least around here. This is plastic, this is plastic. Uh, some cheapskating you could say. But Nikon was never about nice uh, ergonomics or something. It's more the thing that just gets the job done. So internally it's a pretty tough camera. On the outside it doesn't look as tough as, as you might uh, imagine. Typical Nikon thinking, how do you avoid uh, to forget to switch off your light meter after shooting? This is how you switch it on, now it's off. Um, it works, you will never, never, never forget to switch off your light meter, I assure you. But, if you take it to your head, you always have it here in your, right in your forehead. Unless you're shooting with the right eye, then it works a treat.
It's a bit like a rangefinder. I'm the guy who always shoots my cameras with the left eye, but this Nikon really makes me want to shoot with my right eye. Uh, the Nikon FN2 was made from 1982 through 2001, a production run of about 20 years. And that has some big, big advantages. Number one, it's one of the most modern all-mechanical cameras that was ever designed. This shutter was a brand new uh, design in 1982. And uh, also they don't uh, use a lot of lubricants, they designed the mechanics to work with almost no lubricants, so nothing can stiffen up in, uh, with age. The uh, second nice thing is 20 years production run means there are so many cameras still around that it's very easy to pick up an example that just works flawless. And third thing, not so old, again means if you pick up a camera today, it most likely won't need any service or something. The older ones maybe need new seals, uh, light seals around the film door and also the mirror damper. There is a strip of uh, rubber. Uh, that sometimes needs to be replaced, but that's almost about it. So these cameras do fail, of course, but it's kind of rare and it's very easy to pick one up that just works and works and works. If I was smart, I find you uh, some visitor of my channel said, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying point and shoot, it's very easy, but uh, a visitor said, no, it's not that easy. I say it is very easy. You set your camera to 1 25th of a second, um, activate the light meter, take the reading, go a little bit to plus, it says F 5.6, shoot. Focus, but you see if it's in focus or not, if you look through the viewfinder. One small thing, by the way, which is a disadvantage compared to the FM. Uh, see this small tap here? The black ring has a small tap here. It's called the AI coupling. It couples to this thing here for telling the camera about the open aperture. So this is called AI. This thing over here was for the old lenses, pre-AI. Uh, and then this tap is in the way. It will damage the aperture ring of the old lenses. So, but you cannot remove that. On the original FM, this piece is made from metal and there's a small button and you can remove the tap to mount your old lenses. Made prior 1977. Not possible with the FM2 anymore. The question is, do you need that uh, special shutter of this camera for your analog photography? Uh, right now, today, I'm shooting an ISO 25 film, so obviously I don't really need it. Even in bright sunlight, uh, I can shoot everything with 1 over 1000 of a second, and then the original Nikon FM does the same job. Uh, but sometimes, if you're shooting a 100 ISO film, you want to shoot at open aperture in sunlight, or, uh, or you happen to shoot with a flash. Uh, 2 250th of a second is very cool. Uh, so if you happen to do these things, then this camera is really worth it. And um, if you don't, the original Nikon FM does the same job. But the second thing is, um, at least when I got the original FM, I was always thinking, hmm, there is something that I'm longing for, and that's called FM2. This camera is just a legend produced for so long. It's uh, the pinnacle of a mechanical camera design. It doesn't need a battery at all, only for the light meter and uh, nothing comes after it. So uh, if you are into that sort of things, it's also worth to upgrade to the Nikon FM2.
Price-wise, um, a good Nikon FM2 currently, uh, mid-2022, will be around 300 euros in uh, Europe. Uh, if you're lucky and shop around a bit, you pay a little bit less. Um, if you go to uh, an online store or a specialist store and get something with warranty, it might also be 500 euros. The black paint ones are more expensive than the chrome ones, especially in nice condition because the black paint uh, gets more easily damaged. And speaking of that, there is an abundance of cameras out there that have some damage. Uh, normally it's only on the outside. Uh, some of them look really worn and beaten. Uh, most of them still work. Again, uh, Nikons are pretty tough things, but if you want a nice one, you really have to look around a bit to find one. The original Nikon FM, again, when you're lucky, you can do it for 100 euros. A really good one should be not more than 150, because at that time, you start to look for the FM2, right? And then there is also the FE and the FE2. Those are electronic cameras with an electronic control shutter, but they are built on the same chassis and they have the same body design uh, as the FM. So as a user camera, the FE and the FE2 are great, great options. Uh, the only thing is you're more depending on a battery and on electronics that maybe could fail at some point. Again, Nikons are pretty tough, but yeah, you know, how it is with uh, all mechanical cameras, you always have this reassured thinking that it works and works and works all the time. Time for the verdict. Uh, this time it's very easy. Uh, if you're into this uh, sort of thing, then buy this camera. <laughs> okay, finished. Um, this is the last of a long line. This is the last uh, mass production, all mechanical camera ever made. Uh, it works. You have a huge lens selection. And uh, that also means that actually the price isn't very high. I mean, even 300 euros. I know there is an Olympus Ohm one for maybe 100 around. But did you ever try to get a 28 millimeter F2 lens for your Olympus? And then compare the price with a, a Nikon lens, 28 F2. So you see the lens selection of Nikon's uh, mechanical lenses, the manual focus ones, is so big that there is no cheaper way to build, to build up a complete system of 35mm uh, manual focus than Nikon. That's uh, actually my opinion. Uh, also, most of these things don't need a service. I say it again. That means you just buy, test it, and then you shoot and you're happy. Uh, it takes standard batteries. Uh, and it has the super fast shutter in case you need it. So what else can I say? On the minus side, I think the fit and finish could be nicer, but Nikon was never about nice fit and finish. It was more about internal qualities, right? And um, the viewfinder interface is not nice. Uh, it's a bit cluttered. And again, that's not the strong point of Nikon. If you value those things, all these other options from Olympus, maybe Pentax or anything else might make more sense. Uh, also, if you like a different uh, viewfinder interface, check out the Nikon FE2. Uh, it is electronic, yes, but it's got a very much, much, much nicer interface in your viewfinder. Apart from that, this camera is hard to fault. I'm really happy to add it to my collection and it's one of my main shooters by now. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and maybe found it useful. If you've got any questions or comments, write something in the comment section below. I always love to read all your comments, you know that. And I'm going to answer every single one of them. Also, leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate your support. So I hope you have a great time, live long and prosper. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.